हेलो स्टूडेंट्स सो टुडे इज आवर टॉपिक इज चैप्टर टू फ्रॉम हंटिंग गैदरिंग टू ग्रोइंग फूड इन दिस वी रीड अबाउट द हंटर एंड द गैदर सो द नेम कम्स फ्रॉम द वे इन विच दे गॉट देयर फूड जनरली दे हंटेड वाइल्ड एनिमल्स कॉट फिश एंड बर्ड्स गैदर फ्रूट्स रूट्स नट्स शीट्स लीज स्टॉक एंड एग्स सो इन दिस चैप्टर वी स्टडी द फॉलोइंग थिंग्स वराइटी ऑफ फूड्स द बिगनिंग ऑफ फार्मिंग एंड हार्डिंग अ न्यू वे ऑफ लाइफ स्टोरिंग एनिमल्स फाइंडिंग आउट अबाउट द फर्स्ट फार्मर एंड हार्डर टूअर्ड्स अ सेटल लाइफ वट अबाउट अदर कस्टम्स एंड प्रैक्टिस एंड द क्लोजर लुक ऑफ लिविंग एंड डाइंग इन महरगढ़ एंड द जोली हार्डिंग so we know that hunter and gatherers move from one place to another there are many reasons for this first if they had stayed at one place for a long time they would have to eaten up all the available plants and animal resources therefore they would have had to go elsewhere in search of food second the animals move from one place to another in search of small prey or in this case of the deer and wild cattle in search of grass and leaves that's why those who hunted them had to follow their movements third the plants and trees bear fruit in different season so people move from one place to another according to the season and the fourth that people plant and animal all needs water to survive and water found in lake and stream and river so many rivers and lakes are perennial others are seasonal so the people living on their banks would have had to go in search of water during the dry season next that how do we know about these people so archaeologists have found some of the things hunter and gatherers made and used it is likely that people made and used tools of stone wood and bones of which stone tools have survived best some of these stone tools were used to cut meat and bones scrap bark and hides chop fruits and roots some may have been attached to handle of bone or wood to make spear and arrows for hunting other tools were used to chop wood which was used as a firewood wood also used to make huts and tools just look at this map all the places marked with the triangles are sites from which archaeologists have found evidence of hunter and gatherers many sites were located near source of water such as river and lakes as stone tools were important people tried to find places where good quality stones was easily available so first of all we know about the sites what are the sites the sites are a place where the remains of things like tools pots and buildings were found these were made used and left behind by people these may be found on the surface of the earth buried under the earth or sometimes even under water so in that first of all we read about the evidence found in the above sites grains and bones and the sites first wheat barley sheep goat and cattle they are found on maharangar site then rice fragmentary animals bones find in koliva then rice cattle in maharangar wheat and lentil in gulkar in present day of kashmir wheat and lentil dog cattle sheep goat buffalo buzraham wheat 
ग्रीन क्राम वाले बफेलो ऑक्स इंचनाद मिल कैटल शिप गॉड पिग इन हॉलोर ब्लैक ग्रेन मिल्ट कैटल शिप पिग इन आंध्र प्रदेश सो दीज आर सम थिंग्स ग्रेन्स एंड द एनिमल्स विच आर फाउंड इन दीज प्लेसेस सो फ्रॉम स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द अदर थिंग्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी लर्न अबाउट दैट हाउ वी गेट द नेम्स एंड डेड द आर्कोलॉजिस्ट हैव गिवन लेंथ इन नेम्स फॉर द टाइम दैट वी आर स्टडिंग दे कॉल द अर्लीस्ट पीरियड द पेलोथिक दिस कम फ्रॉम टू ग्रीक वर्ड्स पैलो मीन्स द ओल्ड एंड द लिथोज मीन्स द स्टोन द नेम पॉइंट ऑफ द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ द फाइंड ऑफ स्टोन टूल्स The Paleolithic period extends from 2 million years ago to about 12,000 years ago. This long stretch of time is divided into the Lower, Middle, and the Upper Paleolithic. This long span of the time covers 99 percent of human history. The period when we find environmental changes beginning about the 12,000 years ago. Till about 10,000 years ago is called the Mesolithic, means the Middle Stone Age. Stone tools found during this period are generally tin and are called the microliths. Microliths were probably stuck on the handles of bones or wood to make tools such as saw and the sickle. At the same time, older varieties of tools continued to be in use the next stage from 10000 years ago is known as the neolithic now just have a look of the neolithic stone tools these are the some tools that the archaeologist found from the sites paleolithic age stone tools are like cutters and hand axes also they use spear tips and sticks and in the neolithic age more advanced shaped tools like the bow and arrow and harpoons also they use spear tips around 12000 years ago there were major changes in the climate of the world with the shift to relatively warm conditions in many areas this led to the development of grasslands this is turn led to an increase in the number of deer antelope goat sheep and cattle animal that survive on grass so those who hunted these animals now follow them learning about their food habits and their breeding seasons it is likely that this helped people to started think about the herding and rearing these animal then cells fishing also become important the next topic is the beginning of farming and herding this was also a time when several grains bear grasses including wheat barley and rice grew naturally in different parts of the subcontinent men and women and children probably collected these grains as food and learned where they grew and when they reap this may have led them to think about growing plants on their own in this way people became farmers people could also attract and then tame animals by leaving food for them near their shelters the first animals to be tame was the wild ancestor of the dog later people encourage animal that were relatively gentle to came near the camps where they lived these animals such as sheep goat cattle and also the pig live in herded and most of them ate grass often people protect these animals from attack by the other wild animals this is how they become herder next topic is domestication domestication is the process in which people grow crops and look after animals it begins to 12000 years ago 
the earliest domestic animals including dog goat and sheep the earliest plants to be domesticated were wheat and barley the domestication is the name given to the process in which people grow plants and look after the animals very often plants and animals that are tended by the peoples become different from wild plants and animals this is because people select plants and animals for domestication for example they select those plants and animals that are not prone to disease they also select plant that yield large size grain and have strong stalks capable of bearing the weight of the ripe grain and seeds from selected plants are preserved and shown to ensure that the new plants will have the same quality if you plant a seed you will notice that it takes some times to grow this may be for several days weeks months and in some cases years when people begin growing plants it means that they had to stay in the same place for a long time looking after the plants watering weeding driving away animals and birds till the grain ripened and then the grain had to be used carefully as grain had to be stored for both food and sheets people had to think of way of storing it in many areas they begin making large clay pots or wow baskets or dug pits into the ground next topic is storing animals animals multiply naturally besides if they are looked after carefully they provide milk which is an important source of food and meat whenever required in other words animals that are reared can be used as a store of food so here our topic is completed i hope you understand okay thank you